Hey divers, Alec Pierce Scuba, Vintage Scuba, another episode uh, from my experiences, almost 60 years of scuba diving. When I started diving, my instructor, we were trained on two hose regulators, and my instructor, Al Hawking, big ex-Navy guy, brush cut, big belly on him, here. you guys buy one of those single hose regulators, it'll kill you. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Long time ago. So I was trained on two hose regulators on the uh, on the U.S. Divers uh, Mistral. It was a it was it was about as basic a regulator as you could find. It was one stage. Now all regulators today are two stages. You have a stage on the uh, on the tank, and the second stage is in your mouth. Uh, at one time, uh, the the entire mechanism was on the tank, as with the two hose regulator. But it could be a one stage inside that mechanism, or it could still be a two stage. Both stages inside the mechanism. What's the difference? Just quickly, I'll mention this to you, that a, a single stage regulator takes air from the tank at 2,000 PSI in those days, let's say 3,000 today. It takes air from the tank at 3,000 and reduces it to the pressure on your lungs. If it's on the surface, 15 PSI. So when you suck in on a one stage regulator, the air goes from 3,000 to 15. Big jump. It always reminded me of a screen door in a cottage, an old cottage, old screen door. You open it, it swings open, it slams shut. Same with a one-stage regular. You suck on it, air comes in, and when you start breathing, slam shut. Same type of idea. With a two-stage regulator, what we have today, two-stage regulator, the pressure is dropped from the tank pressure, 3,000, down to intermediate pressure, roughly 150. So from 3,000 to 150, not quite so big a drop. But then most important, when you breathe in, you're taking air from 150 down to if you're on the surface, 15. 150 to 15. Instead of 3,000 to 15. 150 to 15 is easy. A little drop in pressure. <sighs> First regulator we, we used when I was training was the Mistral, U.S. Divers Mistral, a one stage regulator. <laughs> like this. Big yellow hoses, and uh, they were used in training at the YMCA in Peterborough, Ontario, and they were well used. I'm not saying they weren't safe to use and that they, they, they weren't well serviced, but they were well used. So it was pretty interesting. But you know, in those days, people said, well, why did you use them like that? Because that's what we had. In those days, that's what we had. So it, it, it was nothing unusual about it. Nobody, nobody complained about their breathing because they were all like that. Nobody complained about their breathing because Every time you sucked in, you got air, uh, which is essentially the whole idea, right? So <laughs> it's the way it was. Now, to take a, 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 a vintage one-stage regular, say a Mistral or something like a Mistral, compared to a modern two-stage single-hose regulator and compare the two, my gosh, there's a big, big difference. Oh, sure, 60 years. Things have changed. Telephones? Regulators, yeah. So anyway, so I was trained on a two hose rig, on a two hose regulator, the old Mistral, one stage, and then for the first short period of time, not for very long, but for a short period of time, probably maybe two years tops, I actually dove with a two hose regulator. And then I was fortunate enough that uh, that I was able to get my own Scooby unit, seventy five dollars. I got a tank, and a regulator, and a pressure checker, and a wetsuit. Bought them from my postman, from our postman. He was a diver, and they fit. Well, did pretty well anyway, and I actually had my own equipment. It was a single hose regulator. I didn't tell my instructor. It's a single hose regulator and a U.S. Divers Aquamatic. Probably, if any of you divers know about the Aquamatic, it probably didn't breathe much better than the old Mistral. But it was, and I used that for many, many years. I had pictures of me diving in the '60s, early '60s, using my good old Aquamatic. But the two hose regulator was 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 great. And you know, I was only 14 at the time, and uh, I was a frogman. I was just like I was just like Mike Nelson. So I sure wasn't complaining. I walked around with a big smile on my face all the time. People would say, what are you smiling about? Oh, I'm thinking about going diving this afternoon, and I'm going to be like Mike Nelson. I would find something or help somebody or stuff. like." And I actually did that stuff, too. It was pretty common. But I remember helping a young man uh, at, at a Boy Scout camp. I went down and helped him find an outboard motor. And he'd lost off one of the Boy Scout boats, and they were pretty upset about it. Stuff like that. I, I wasn't Mike Nelson, but it was fun to pretend. Anyway, the two hose regulators are pretty good. I have here a two hose regulator. Now, this is a fairly old model as well. 
I'll explain some of the differences later. But this is a typical two hose regulator. Uh, the the, the uh, mechanism itself is contained in this box. It was called a box. The box was split in half. You had the top box and the bottom box. The bottom box actually is the part that attached to the tank and had the mechanism, the seats and the, the levers and the diaphragm. And the top box didn't have much in there, just the exhaust valve for when you blew out and the bubbles come out through these holes around the outside. You see the mirror bubbles that go up to the surface, They're very much like a reg today. And then, and then uh, you had a mouthpiece went into your mouth, of course. And and when you breathed in, the air came around the right hand side. You sucked in through your mouthpiece. And then when you exhale, when you breathed out, then the air would go out this hose around here to the top box and come out the door. It was very very simple, very simple mechanism. You look at it. There it is. Just about that simple. But compared to today's regulators, and by compared I mean in what it will do, what it won't do, and, uh, and how you actually dive with it, it's kind of interesting as well. First of all, there is no pressure gauge on this regulator. There's no way to put a pressure gauge on, there's no ports. You know, ports, the little openings on your first stage, you take one out with an Allen key, and you can put a pressure gauge in, you know, or a computer. You can put a BC inflator hose or a safe second octopus, whatever you want to call it. You can put all, the, there's no way to do that. There are no ports. Why didn't they put ports on here? Well, they didn't put ports on here because we didn't have pressure gauges. We didn't have power inflate BCs. We didn't have safe seconds. We didn't have any of those things. So there'd be little or no point to putting ports onto a regular to accept things that hadn't been invented yet. You see, they didn't come along for some time. The first uh, submersible pressure, decent submersible pressure gauge was invented by a good friend of mine, Sam Lecoque from Sportsways, came out in 1962. And, and by then, single hose regulators were starting to appear, and you could put it onto the single hose regulator, but you could not put it onto a two hose regulator. And similarly, the, the first uh, low pressure BC inflator didn't come out until oh, probably in the mid 70s. You see, and by then, they used to pretty much disappear. The last two hose regulators made by US divers was about 75. And uh, by then, nobody really bought them anyway, just a few uh, you know, old people like me and uh, military types and so on. They would still buy them, but not very many. Most of them were single hose regulators, so you could put that BC inflator hose into your single hose first stage, and you, you could inflate your BC automatically. And then a little later than that, probably the mid-80s, then, uh, then the use of the safe second became pretty common. And there was another port on a, on a modern first stage to attach that safe second. So all those things came later. But but this is a reg, just that simple. So the regulator went onto the tank. You just similar to today. You undo the, the, the yoke screw, take out the dust cap, you put this over the valve, snug up the yoke screw, and it's on the regulator. Turn on there, and you're ready to go diving. So in that respect, it was it, it's the same. It mounts exactly the same. It mounts on the tank just like this behind your head. I will point out, because I know some of you guys are going to send me comments and say, hey, Ali, you can put a submersible pressure gauge. You can't. It was possible to put a submersible pressure gauge on an older two-hose regulator if you had the correct attachment. There was a small attachment. It was called a banjo, because it looked like a banjo, a round, uh, a round metal part with a stem on it. And what you would do, you'd put that banjo in here before you put the regulator on the tank. And you'd, you, you would sort of sandwich the banjo in there between the yoke screw and the tank. And then that banjo had a threaded end on it, and you could screw a pressure gauge into it if you had a pressure gauge. So it actually was possible to put a submersible pressure gauge on these after pressure gauges became uh, uh, available in the, in the 60s. And then likewise, before somebody mentions it to me, yes, you could put low pressure uh, accessories on some of the two hose regulars as well. Some of the later two hose regulars that came out a little later than this one, they had a, a small spigot, if you like, a little opening on the side <clears throat> with a cap on it. And that opening was low pressure so that you could put a low pressure hose into that. So you could put a safe second on it or an inflator hose for a BC or something else. What was that for? Because it actually was put on there before those items were available. Well, that was actually so that you could run a hose from the surface. Now, these were commonly used as a hookah, called a hookah, just like the kids today use hookahs. I don't know what to use hookahs. What do they use hookahs for today? I, see, I know my son had one for a while. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> this is called a hookah uh, rig. And this would mount with a special harness you strap on your back so the regulator sat on your bank. 
on your back. There may not be any tank. There might be a tank, but there may not be a tank. So you could just take the rig, and then a hose would run up to the surface. And if you had a source of air at about 110, 150 PSI, you could pump the air down into that hole, and it would go straight into the regulator, and you could breathe. You didn't have to have a tank. You see? And you could use that port. Later, we could use that port to put on some of those low-pressure accessories. But essentially, that's what you got. You got your first stage and, and your, 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 the body of the, the regulator. It wasn't first or second stage, the regulator. And you put it on the tank and away you went. So that was one thing that was kind of different. You didn't have all those accessories and the mounting was similar. Now, the hoses were a little bit different. I'm going to try to demonstrate this. I'm going to try to demonstrate this without hurting this regulator. This regulator is very special. I'm going to try, if I can, slip those off. I keep those loose for a good reason. So the regulator would go in the tank, and then you put the tank on, so the regulator is back behind your head, and then and then you would you would go like this. You put your head back, and you flip the hoses over in front. You see, eh? if you've been watching C hundred tall, you've seen Mike Nelson do that. So now the hoses are in front, and and as I mentioned earlier already, the intake hose is on the right hand side, and the exhaust is on the left, and here your mouth mouthpiece sat in front of you just like that. Simple, and it was very simple. Now when you wanted to go diving, you took this and. Now, why, why does it just come in here and go out there? Well, because in this mouthpiece, there are, sorry, spider web. In this mouthpiece, there are non-return valves. There's a little mushroom valve in here that only lets the air go this way into your mouth. And there's another same type of mushroom valve over here that only lets air go out. Water can't come back in. So when you suck on the mouthpiece, nothing can come in past this mushroom valve. But air can go past this mushroom valve and in. They're obviously they're mounted opposite. So this mushroom valve opens this way, and this mushroom valve opens that way. Now when you exhale, you blow out, this mushroom valve jams shut. And this mushroom valve now, which faces that way, it can open and so you can exhaust out. So you suck in, blow out. Just that simple. Easiest thing in the world. So what's the big deal? Why am I taking all this time to explain this to you? Well, maybe you haven't had it explained before, but also there are other things about this that are kind of interesting. So let me give you an example. Suppose, for instance, you took this regulator out of your mouth, and this mouthpiece, which is fairly substantial in size, it's about an inch and a half to two inches in diameter and three to four inches long, that fills up with water. Now, with a modern regulator, you have a purge button. You push on the purge button, and air blows out, and you put it in your mouth and start breathing. There's no purge button here. What do you do? Well, there were two choices, really. You could put this in your mouth and suck, and you got a big mouthful of water, which you gobbled down and got enough air, hopefully, so the first breath was wet, but you could breathe. And then you blow out hard, and, and then you start breathing, and you were just fine. If you had a lung full of air, you could put this in your mouth blow out really hard, hopefully you had enough air, you would blow it out. But it wasn't easy to do that. Another thing that you could do, it's kind of interesting, because the, the, the mechanism was mounted back there between your shoulder blades, and lower than your mouth, if you took this hose, on a two hose regulator, and you lifted it up like this above your head, it would start to bubble. Bubbles would come out. Because the mechanism you see is under greater pressure. It's lower, right, deeper in the water if you like. It's under greater pressure than the mouthpiece is. So the regulator would start to free flow, what we would call the free flow today. It would free flow. And you let it free flow, and so there's air coming out of this mouthpiece, and that pushed the water out. And then while it was up there, you'd tip your head up and slowly bring it down. <sighs> Again, that first breath might be a little bit wet, but at least it was mostly air. So that was one thing you could do as well. Now, on the early two hose, I should point this out, on the early two hose regulators, the very, very, very first ones, they didn't have these non-return valves. In fact, they didn't have a mouthpiece like this. In fact, they didn't have two hoses. They had one hose. In fact, they were called a one-hose, two-hose regulator. Hold on a minute. That can't be right. How about we call it a continuous hose, or a one, I don't know what it was called, but it was a two-hose regulator because it looked like this. But in fact, this hose was one piece, one molded piece of rubber all the way around. This attached to the regulator, it came around, the mouthpiece was molded in, and off it went. Now, since the mouthpiece was part of the hose, there were no, you couldn't get in there to put valves in. There were no valves in there. The hose was all one piece. That's right. So now it's a little bit different. Now when you suck on it, if there's water in here, you could get water. As he, it wasn't quite as automatic as with these non-return valves. So with a one-piece hose, 
when using a two hose regulator, you know, with me on this. When you started to breathe, you had to be sure you were tipped on your left shoulder so that air had gone up into this hose and you could suck on it and then blow it out through the bottom. And then if you tried to, if you tried to uh, blow the hoses clear, you could pull this up and air would blow out of there, but as you brought it down, you could just as easily get water. So it was quite common for you, instead of doing that, you would have this in your mouth and then you would roll, don't breathe yet, but then you would roll, and what you would do is you would roll like this. You would roll like this so that the air, the, the, on the pressure on the, on, the, on the regular behind you, increased, decreased on this hose, and the air would start to flow through, and you kept on going all the way around, and that air would go right through past your mouth, right through, and right up, you roll right around, and it would go right out the other side, and this was in your mouth. When you finish your roll, you could start to breathe. Thank goodness for those one-way valves, huh? Because if this came out of your mouth at any time, if you had to buddy breathe, we used to buddy breathe, and remember buddy breathing? Maybe some of you don't even know what that is, but they don't do buddy breathing today anymore, which is good, I think. But if you had to buddy breathe, or this came out of your mouth for any reason, then you had to do this little roll maneuver to get it clear, and it wasn't all that easy. So thank goodness when the two-hose, two-hose <laughs> regulator came apart. Along. The two-hose regulator with two hoses. There aren't very many of those one-hose two hose regulars left. I have one very unique one. The hoses that I have are U.S. divers and they're blue. Very, very rare and in perfect condition. Uh, I, I have one of them, but they're not very common. Anymore. This is a more common setup. So that is one of the problems that you faced uh, is clearing these hoses right away. I did mention body breathing, so you can imagine with all these shenanigans and trying to keep these hoses clear, how much fun it was to body breathe. Yeah, exactly. Well, in fact, we had a kind of a neat way to buddy breathe back then. I don't know if they still do it in the classes, but if you needed to buddy breathe, you, did, you didn't face your buddy. It was very difficult because these hoses weren't too long. You see, they're not very long. So uh, this was hanging here, and if you're facing your buddy, you had to flip it over or have them decide. Very, very difficult to do. So what we commonly used to do was do what we called piggyback buddy breathing. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know how well you know your buddy. But if you're pretty close friends, and piggyback buddy breathing might be fun. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, but here's how it worked. I would be swimming along like this with my tank full of air, and my buddy who was out of air, you see, he would be right above me. He would hang on to my tank valve and be right above me. So his head is right above me, close, up front like this. And I would take a breath, two breaths, and I'd take it out and hand it to him like this, right above mine. I wouldn't let go, I'd hang on to it, you see. He would put it in his mouth, he would take two breaths. Now it worked pretty well because as I brought it up like this, it would start to bubble, clear the water. So he, it was automatically purged for him and he could start to breathe. Then he would hand it down to me and I would have my breath of air, which I kept in my lungs. Again, not a good practice, but we did it. And blow hard. And that's how we used to buddy breathe. Of the old two hose regulators years and years ago. So, clearing the regulators and, and body breathing with the regulator, we don't do that anymore, but just to explain some of the differences. Getting the hoses clear, mounting them, some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't work. They were pretty neat, they were a lot of fun. Now, if you get a chance to try a two hose regulator, for God's sakes, jump at it. If you know someone that has one, it's in good working condition, go out and, and try it. It really is a fun thing to do. It is part of the history of scuba diving, part of vintage scuba diving. And so a lot of fun to try one. I do suggest you use it in a pool, rinse it out well afterwards so the chlorine doesn't affect the rubber. There's a lot of rubber in a two-hose regulator and the rubber gets very brittle and breaks, uh, rinse, but in a pool and rinse it out really well afterwards or in very shallow water. Don't be making some silly dive. Don't, don't borrow a two-hose regulator and dive the Andrea Doria or something like that. A nice shallow dive, 20, 30, 40 feet in calm water, and take it down and give it a try. Remembering some of the things I've told you, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. I should mention that, in fact, that there are lots of divers who do exactly that. There's a very active vintage group right around from all around the world, North America, and they come from all over, and we get together regularly and go to different places, and we actually make vintage dives. And we're using regulators like this, and old masts and fins and so on, and it's a lot of fun. A very common place. We dive in the quarries often throughout North America and in Florida in the springs in Florida because it's clear and shallow and warm and it's a very very safe environment and we have a lot of fun comparing our equipment, talking about the old makes and models and sharing techniques and just having a whole lot of fun. It's not always old people either, not people like me, there are lots of young people too, not 
too many in their teens, a couple, but 20s and 30s that are really interested in the history and the old gear. It's a lot of fun. It really is. So if you get a chance to try a two-hose regulator, now you understand a bit more about them. You understand some of the techniques that were used and, and that you'd have to use if you get a chance to try it. Well, don't miss that chance to give it a try. I hope you learned something there. I hope that was interesting. Keep the comments coming. I love them. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Bye-bye.